And yes, no, not happening. Thank you very much. So, uh, we may look at removing that chat message a bit later. We did miss, it was interesting. It's a narrow strip of uh, ground that we did miss there. And again, over there, you can see as it uh, works its way across the spray head, but that looks like we're done. So we'll get that folded in. I'll we'll head back to the uh, entrance of the field. We can call this one done. It does need herbicide. Get this out of there and if I jump out... Oh, this only says small weeds. That's interesting. I was expecting them to be medium. Well, anyway. Um, this guy, yeah. I'm, being, I'm considering this as being a strong encouragement for me to uh, just get a new mower and use this one as a uh, oh you know what I know about this because the last thing we did was turn left um, my bet is that uh, the uh, tractor is going to do a, a right hand turn when it gets to the other end of the field because it failed to do a right hand turn at this end so, I'll turn this around and we'll go from this side. I'm hoping raising the uh, loader arms is going to make it a little bit more... Um, or a little bit less likely to uh, get stuck on the hedge. I am not sure though. For now, engines up, and off goes the uh, chopping. So this guy is doing absolutely fine. We're down to thirty-six percent. We're about halfway across the field, and we have perfect nitrogen because soybeans don't do nitrogen and we have good pH which basically means we don't have to add lime this year so that's all good uh, meanwhile got ourselves another field to spray so that field took 19% this one I think Might use less, might use more. We'll check out and look at the ground. Weep. So, nitrogen bad. Yes. Okay, so canola uses significantly more nitrogen than... Um, than barley. So we are going to use smaller field, but probably end up using the same amount of uh, fertilizer here. And this field you can see is, I think these weeds are double. I believe we planted both these fields last time. So I could have put down more, um, more manure, 
on this field to reduce the amount of liquid fertilizer we're using. How could you put more on both of them? Maybe I should keep notes, better notes, more notes, just notes, um, about how much nitrogen each of the crops requires so that I can gauge um, much earlier on in the planting cycle how much uh, manure I should put down before I plant in order to save on the uh, artificial fertilizer. Not really artificial, is it? It's well, it's, do we call it unnatural? It's all chemicals and, yeah. It's what the plants need. It has electrolytes. Okay. But this one shouldn't take us long. And then we have to go and just chew through fertilizer on our other field opposite the farm entrance. And that is just gonna, that's gonna use a ton. Ooh, just manage that turn. A little bit of bad soil in the corner here. But, uh, I think we, we, we do have a, a lot of very good fields. Obviously, where we've got the grass planted, it's all just clay. Um, and while we do need the... We do need... Um, The stuff. Um, we do need better, yeah, good soil for grass. I don't mind, we cut grass five, four or five times a year. So the fact that it's not on the bestest of soils, probably not too big of a deal because we're still gonna get a ton of grass, more than sufficient grass, to keep the farm running. And even now, most of the time, we're just selling it as silage. Um, okay, now we're still running. That's a good thing. off the right there. And just getting this work done means that um, we won't lose environmental score when the harvest happens. Because pH and nitrogen your, does not affect your environmental score until you harvest the field. So you have to maintain your grass because if you don't, that can that can affect your environmental score mid-year. But with arable fields, if you don't sort it out now, um, when you harvest, that's too late and you're going to have a bad environmental score for the next year, which is going to affect your income somewhat. And we've got quite a good income level. I'm guessing that little orange band there is the fail to plant along that edge there. Again, yeah, over winter we did get a couple of huge harvesters in the store sale. But you're talking like £200,000 for, for, for a used harvester. Nice, it's a big harvester, but 
Um, I can't warrant that size of harvester yet. Still. Yeah, we are building up the fields. We have two arable by our farm. These two here plus the one across the road. We've got five arable fields now. So harvesting is going to be a big job this year. Um, and I'd like to avoid renting something. Because obviously uh, we are going to be putting a ton of hours on whatever we end up getting. But... Uh, I kind of wonder if I missed a little bit there, but uh, the graphic showing it's all green, so we're good. The mower's still running, we're so good. We only used 11% on that. So it's more per acre, but less acreage. go to our new field which has absolutely zero nitrogen on it. I figure we're probably going to be uh, topping off this tank a couple of times just to get that field done and it's looking nice and open with all the trees chopped down. So there's probably two trees at the end here, uh, maybe four, which we could have taken out. But, uh, not really going to worry too much about that. Okay, now for this field, um, obviously the nitrogen level is just sad. And we are going to have to deal with that. Or we're going to end up with zero on our uh, environmental score for nitrogen level. Um, but the fact that we haven't weeded it and there are no weeds and it's in the last, well, the penultimate stage of growth, we have one more growth stage. So we do have just enough time to get back on this field with a little bit of herbicide and just drive around and make it look good for the, uh, the bureaucrats at Brussels, I guess. And then uh, you can see the change. We're going from a deep red to a deep green. Which means we are just dumping fertilizer here. Yeah, going forwards next year, it's going to be a lot better. But as I was saying about the, uh, the environmental score, the environmental score will have a huge hit if I don't do everything that's needed on this field. Obviously I can't fix the tillage problem because that happens before you plant stuff and also affects the environmental score before you plant stuff. So what I may be able to do to fix that is um, is plant this field maybe with um, winter canola because obviously it's wheat at the moment so we'll want to replace it with an oil seed um, but if I plant it with winter canola I can get it seeded before I get to the crop sales and that will fix the part of the environmental score to do with tillage So doing, doing what is needed before it has to happen. Now things like um, our barley field and um, that we fertilized first, um, I, can, I can hold off on planting that and say do soybeans in there next year. And it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, the uh, canola field obviously can be planted in the fall. In fact, most of the time, oh, um, I'm most likely looking at uh, 
running. Like I said, these these edges difficult. Um, yeah, most of the time we are usually planting winter crops. So uh, I'm stuck on a tree again. Seriously, dude. Yeah, okay. I will uh, I'll drive forwards out of this mess. Maybe I will run straight north. Got to figure out how to get a bit closer there. I might just need to chop down at least the trees that are closest to this field and just destroy them. I'm not interested in the lumber. The lumber won't be very valuable. Speaking of which, lumber. Um, if you are doing um, the autoload crates of lumber from the Platinum expansion, only load them with Platinum, ex platinum expansion trees. Um, apparently the spruce and the... What are the basic ones that we get? Uh, pallets. Tree saplings. So tree saplings, spruce and the pine are base game trees. Um, and then you get all of these things, the elm, the hickory, the dogwood, the maple. They're just crap for any sort of... Uh, logging. Um, stone pine, pine spruce, interesting. Um, but if you go to the platinum expansion, maybe you have to have, I don't know. So pine and spruce. So it looks like the trees themselves have to be enabled for the game save that you're or the map that you're using so if you're on silver run forest don't use pine don't plant pine and spruce and use them in the uh, containers because they're not that valuable um, the sequoia just doesn't have any value it's not designed to be used as um, production material anyway um, but yeah, the spruce and the pine don't aren't aren't are a very low value wood. Um, you're better off planting the the other stuff that came with the platinum expansion. Just just a little hint. Not that I you know I'm not generally using stuff i was considering hey could i load up a pallet of or not a pallet a container of wood and see where we get to but really um, i'm guessing there needs to be a specific cell point that accepts one of those containers these things I believe you can put th put other things in a shipping container. So if you're buying a shipping container and a skid steer, you could put the skid steer in the shipping container and then uh, take it all back to the yard that way. Okay, let's just think about the trees for a while. I think I've all, all I've really got to do is get as close to the edge as I can. It's where a spread uh, spreader comes in a little bit more efficient. In that I can spread the... I don't have to get the spreader under the trees in order to... Uh, you know, fertilise to the edge of the field. And the 
This is not the uh, most efficient way of doing this. Uh, it's my field. I can do it the way I want to. I kind of really need to go back the way I came there, but uh, I don't know. Let's uh, do that way. I'm just leaving loads of patches that I'm just going to have to go back and fill up. Obviously driving straight lines is the most efficient and least crop damaging method. It's very windy outside. Um, I don't know if you can hear the wind in the background, but we have had shy of gale force winds all most of the night with rain. So Plans for today. I don't, we don't really have much in the way of serious chores to do, um, as far as I'm, you know, going out and doing stuff. Um, we do have the kids coming over this afternoon. Mrs. Osa will be going out at midday to pick them up. Um, she may stop off at the store for a couple of, yeah. Oh, we need some milk, we need some eggs, we need, yeah, the, the usual staples. But Mrs. Osa goes into hospital next week. So our opportunities to do big, serious food is pretty much curtailed. Um, it'll just be me and teenage Osa. I'll be out most of the afternoon, early evening, but I'll still need to eat something but it's most likely to be um, you know, something out in the freezer, thrown in the oven, air fryer, whatever, that takes 30, 40 minutes to heat up and then eat. And um, that will generally be sufficient. Um, yeah. I'm not planning on steak and uh, baked potatoes anytime soon this week and then lunchtime yeah sandwiches whatever so not not doing any great gourmet cooking should we say now once Mrs. Osa gets back from the hospital, there'll probably be some assistance from church, so we won't be doing in-house cooking, but uh, we may get some assistance of people bringing food round. And then the plan with the kids today is we will go out and eat this evening because that's the last chance Mrs. Osa has to eat anything because she has to prep for a surgery from pretty much tomorrow morning okay. a little bit that way so there is a tiny strip of red along the edge there I'll figure that out. In a moment. And again, probably would be doing much better if I was running this on uh, GPS rather than just trying to gauge it all by where I am on the map. a better line. I'm still probably not getting much out of the end nozzle. Or the 
end boom. But, uh, with this, obviously, with all of the the fancy GPS attached things and what have you, um, you're not so much concerned with functional boom width. Um, give me a second while I turn around here. All the partial width thing at the bottom of that help screen where we're running 18 meters partial width and I can block off parts of the sprayer uh, manually. Obviously when you've got the um, the spot and spray and the uh, crop sensors on the tractor uh, you don't need to worry about manually adjusting the partial width of spray because that's all taken care of. It is, it, it is a nice handy feature to have so if you're not using precision farming or you don't have um, the uh, the crop sensors installed then actually running with um, yeah adjusted widths it's not quite so easy with this thing um, I will say um, I have used it but you tend to have to spray both edges of the field and then adjust your width as you drive down the middle because adjusting the width as you do the edge doesn't really help because the boom's still sticking over the edge so any trees that are out there are just going to get in the way so turn that off let's get the speed up a bit and then round about here turn it back on again I'll see if I can get close to the edge of the crop while not hitting a tree. How's that for a, a super plan? We could adjust the boom down a little. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going too close to the trees again. Yep. This is one of the reasons why I kind of prefer the three-point attacher because it reacts immediately to what I'm doing with the tractor's direction where um, a towed sprayer just sticks out and gets all in the way. You know what, that tree is just a pain in the butt but we seem to have covered the field as best we can. So I'm going to fold that up and this tree here you're just too darn close. So I'll chop it down and I need to find where it turns red. That's that gone. <laughs> 